Hey, folks, we are live. Here I am with Dan Recuperating Pancaldi from the No Enemies Here show. So we're going to talk about Roman Empire war games this evening. So not pipe tobacco. Hopefully we'll get some Roman Empire uh, questions answered. So um, let me uh, give everybody a super quick, because we don't normally do this on this show, but I do have a closing date. So, you know, that's final price and final closing costs. And it's on the scale schedule. So hopefully we'll be moving next weekend. So we'll Yay. talk about that a little more on Monday on the Monday show. So, so everybody hopefully is having a good day today. I've had a very, 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 very stressful last several days. So I am unwinding with some log of Ulan 16, which I think there's about one more pour of. So we'll be having some of that later on too. So we're going to, we're going to be killing that bottle tonight. So let's say hello to everybody. Thanks for joining us. We got all the stuff out. So somebody asked me on Twitter, this was what motivated this question. Um, uh, what Roman empire games are available as opposed to Roman Republic games. And we actually have seen a kind of a more, I, I feel like more Roman Republic games, right? We've got the old, you know, Richard Berg Roman Republic games. We've got mo most of the SPQ, uh, most of the GBOH uh, Roman ancients with, you know, a couple exceptions uh, are, are Roman Republican period, right? SPQR, Great Battles of Julius Caesar. Uh, those are mostly Roman Republic period, right? There's a, if you have the Battles of the Warrior Queen expansion for Caesar Conquest of Gaul, that's Empire period. That's going to be about first century AD. Um, which I think that's Boudicca's Rebellion. If so, that's first century AD. I think it is first century AD anyway. So, um, but then we've got something. It was pointed out to me that Caesar's Legions, the Caesar's Legions game from Avalon Hill, who may or may not be have been the original publisher of that, by the way. I'm not sure. I'd have to, I'd have to check. I don't trust myself on that anymore since a whole bunch of their stuff turned out to be first published by somebody else. Uh, but Caesar's Legions is an operational ancients game, which is itself a pretty rare configuration. And it's got some Roman Republic stuff, but it's also got some Roman Empire stuff. Uh, same deal with Imperium Romana, whatever version of it you have, whether it's the first one, the second one, or the third one. Um, there's a lot of Republic stuff, but there's also a fair amount of Roman, of, of Roman Empire topics as well. Um, and then, of course, for GBOH, we have Cataphract, which is... Uh, Byzantine stuff for the most part. How how difficult is that cataphract? Uh, so Great Battles of History is considered a kind of a difficult system. Truthfully, at this point, I I kind of feel like that is mostly a function of the rule books rather than of the system necessarily being impossibly difficult. I mean, it's not impossibly difficult anyway, but I think its complexity is usually overrated, and I think that's because it's not a particularly easy rule book to learn from. Um, so, uh, but there is also a simple great battles of history, right? Which, which to me, it isn't really all that much simpler. It does, however, play faster and it kind of unifies all the games in the series that it covers. So, so GBOH is a little weird, right? Cause it's got, it's a series, but all the games in the series are different. There's no series rule book and there never has been for like regular straight full GBOH. Um, and all the games have different, some different mechanisms. Some of the games are chip pulls. Some of them aren't. Some of them have this activation mechanism. Some of them don't. Um, there's a lot of differences, more differences than you would think between the individual games in the series. One of the virtues of simple GBOH is that it lets, it doesn't cover every game in the series. You can't play anything with it, but you can play all the big ones, right? The ones you can't play are things like Samurai and um, Caesar at uh, Alexandria, for example, uh, but that's, those are like very specialized games. Uh, so you can play like all the SPQR stuff, all the Julius Caesar stuff, all the Alexander stuff, all the Hoplite stuff. And you can use it all just with that one simple GBOH rule book. Um, it's my opinion that it's not all that much simpler, but it, everybody agrees it does play faster. And, you know, that's worth something. But the big caveat to that is all but the largest GBOH battles using the full GBOH rules play in one sitting anyway. The only exceptions to that are like maybe Pharsalis, which is in Hoplite, which is a huge battle, a huge battle. Um, maybe 
Gargamella, you might need two sittings for. I mean, a couple of the really, really big ones, but mostly you could play them all in the sitting with the full rules. So I don't really think that's uh, particularly noteworthy by itself. Um, so I've, you know, it's it'd be an interesting thing to use the War in Europe map uh, to do like a Roman Empire game. Maybe you could make something out of that, but using the the infrastructure of war in Europe, I think would be a mistake, as I think Stigler uh, implies here. And and you do have a lot, as you see, in a game like Imperium Romanum, right? There's no campaign game in that, where you're not playing a thousand-year campaign game with monthly turns. That would be something, but there's, there's I mean, you'd have centuries where very little happens, right? So it, it just, it would it would really be totally boring. Um, I think, I think the root of this, I agree with Stigler on this. It says that ancients are about the only topic that works well with area movement. It's also abstract. Now I, I think area movement is generally fine, but I think it's harder to make a hex grid work for ancients at some scales at the tactical scale. It works fine. Uh, a hex grid works fine, but at the operational or strategic scale, hex grids kind of stop making sense. But I think a lot of that is the types of sources that are available for that stuff, right? I mean, by definition, the, the stuff's ancient. And, and there's not a lot of information about the campaigns, about the operational nature of the campaigns, about what Caesar had to do to keep his army in supply for the most part. So go ahead. No, I was saying hi. Oh, okay. Dan, Dan is heavily medicated and in a sling. So because he had he had fist surgery. Uh, so it really hurts. Gonna, it hurts. He's not going to be fisting anyone anytime soon. He's on a strict no fisting regimen from his from his doctor. Yeah, and 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 and, and if I can uh, just say something, um, this week's no enemies here is going to be a bit strange. So because he's not allowed to fist anybody. That's disgusting. <laughs> so I think this is a great series. Um, this is, uh, the ancient world. Now I do think that it had, had it been designed later in Berg's career or was being designed today, I think we would probably have a deck of cards instead of a lot of those tables. And we might have some play aids that, that work differently, but it, I, I still think it's a really good system. So welcome everybody to the show. Please subscribe to the channel. Please thumbs up the video. Please check out Dan's channel, which is linked in the video description and super chats and super stickers are up super chat or super sticker will help to guarantee that your question gets noticed as opposed to uh, to not uh, noticing. Jeff Wesovich, uh, we are cl closing. We it is scheduled on Thursday. So we didn't we didn't make the schedule but the between the reduction in closing costs just because of the process and I'm not paying any extra to hold the rate for the extra 2 days. So so Dan, Dan uh, was incapacitated in a tragic fisting accident. <laughs> this is going to be the the uh, this is going to be the joke. It really hurts, man. It's, so, it's, it's I bet it does. It's just the palpitations are killing me. So he is he is on he's not on unfortunately not on the really good painkillers. I'm on a better painkiller than Dan's on right now. So. SPI's Legion. So that's a tactical game. It's part of Prestag's Master Pack. Um, and I don't know, I don't know what battles it covers. So for all I know, it might be Roman Empire stuff. Hey, uh, um, a great day's got a great question. What scale is preferred in ancient Roman era gaming? Let me get to that in a minute. Uh Wars of that's Marcus great. Aurelius is a great choice, actually. Let me uh uh, we've actually just mentioned simple GBOH. There, there's nothing. It's so simple versus regular GBOH is kind of six of one, half dozen of the other. It's just whichever you prefer. I prefer the full version. Some people do prefer simple GBOH. There are reasons to prefer simple GBOH. For me, um, like the the interactions of the different tactical systems and and weapon types and stuff like that is really the kind of the joy of discovery in GBOH. And full GBOH does that better. Um, well, let's be nice to the nice Italians. Hey, I mean, hey, they, they hey. did, they did carry a lot of water for all of Western civilization with the whole Roman empire business. Okay. So, and, and as someone had said, Monica Bellucci beat that. The food, oh, there you go. And the food and the food. So let's not, uh, let's, let's not forget that. 
Uh, so the Grass Crown is relatively new for Amabel. It is a, a Roman tactical game, and I do also don't know what battles it covers. Um, it is it has gotten a pretty good uh, uh, it has a good reputation among the people who have played it. Let me put it that way. Um, so Tim Sales mentions Monica Lucci Storm over Jerusalem. Yeah. So and Siege of Jerusalem that is late first sec early second century something like that. I think second century. That sounds right. Um, so something like that. Yeah, so I think Commands and Colors Ancients, which is a fine game, by the way, um, has uh, is a significantly simpler game than either version of GBOH. Um, they're they're both good games. Again, it's a preference thing. Whatever I I play and enjoy Commands and Colors Ancients not very often because I prefer Commands. If I'm going to play Commands and Colors, I'd rather play Napoleonics, but that's just me. Um, so Dan Dan is that. <laughs> Dan has been euthanized. So, <laughs> and by the way, uh, Ed Holzman, Sophia Loren is one of the most beautiful women ever. Well, yeah, no comment on that. That's I, right. I, did, no I don't like her as an actress. Let me put it that way. Mark, uh, come out although she know. was in Fall of the Roman Empire with Christopher Plummer, uh, which is a good, like, late Roman, late Western Roman Empire. Ugh. I don't want to say good, but because Gladiator is a better movie and it's pretty much set in the same period. Artie, Artie. Yes. Have you ever seen Victorio De Sica's Two Women? No. Okay. With Sophia Loren. Okay. Watch it. Watch that and tell me if it's not award winning par excellence. All right. Well, I'll have to check it out. So, yeah, you check it out and bring a napkin. So, we're I talking mean, here about. I'm, I'm, for your eyes, you're going to cry. Bring up, you're not allowed to watch it then, are you, Dad? Because you're not allowed to use that hand anymore. So, um, so Richard Berg's series, The Ancient World, had two games in it. There were supposed to be two more, but there we'll we'll be lucky to get the third. Um, the first one was Rise of the Roman Republic, which is like early Roman Republican stuff, like the Samnite Wars and that kind of thing. Uh, the second volume was Carthage, the First Punic War, which covers. Carthage, the first Punic War, but that's not the Punic War that everybody wants to, the game on, right? Everybody wants the second Punic War with Hannibal and the elephants and Scipio and all that stuff. Um, so the third volume was supposed to be Thunderbolt, the second Punic War. And Richard Berg had been working on it for years. Apparently, he continued working on it the entire time, and then he passed away, unfortunately. So as a tribute to, and, and I think we mentioned this when we had Mark on a couple of weeks ago, uh, as a tribute to Richard Berg, Mark and Alan Ray, who is the series developer, are going to finish Thunderbolt. And because the maps are the same and the counter, a lot of the counter mix is the same, that that package containing Thunderbolt will also contain a reprint of the first two games as well. Um, it is one of my favorite game series. I, I haven't played it in a long time, and I'd really like to remedy that. Uh, but it is a fantastic game series that I really wanted to see 10 games in. And we never, thanks, Richard, we never got that. Um, so unfortunately, uh, you know, we didn't get the games that we wanted, but we we are going to get Thunderbolt sooner or later. I wouldn't count on seeing it until about 2024, personally. So, so yeah, ID Jester is with us. Hopefully, uh, I hope, yeah, hope you're no, doing well, ID Jester. Yeah, Kurt, I'm gonna make it for sure. If I can, if I can do this now in in my time of of of, yeah. Ancients one and two, uh, I believe, were from three W. These were sort of qu small quads. I think they do have some battles from that period. So, so and the so this is a this is a Republican period though, right? So Julius Caesar is is Roman Republic. We don't get an empire until at least Augustus. So, and then that's debatable. I would I would probably venture to say that the empire is not, that's I got a very good reputation, by the way. Uh, I had it at one point and I traded it away for something else and I really kind of should have kept it, but, you know, we, we, we uh, you know, you win some, you lose some. So, I, Hexes works fine for Imperium Romanum, but Understand what Imperium Romanum is, which is a scenario-based operational game 
Um, and so it's you're not playing out like the whole history of the Roman Empire and Imperium Romanum. But but it's one of pretty few examples of that, right? Ancient operational stuff. There's really not that many. And a lot of the ones that do exist have had to kind of make up some details that seem reasonable from the the pretty lean accounts in the historical sources. So, and the Italians also gave us baked ziti. So, and the and the gabagool. So let's not forget about that. I it is specifically El Cid that I was thinking of when I said I didn't like her as a as yeah, a, yeah. watch as an two actress. women, watch it. So there, I can't tell you what the best Italian restaurant in Columbus is. It's called Scali. And last I was there, Grandma Scali was still in the back making the brujol. So yeah. it's a fantastic Italian Absolutely. place. Absolutely. Handmade everything, right? I, they don't hand make their own pasta, unfortunately. But they, they hand make everything else. They hand make their own sausage. They make their own brujol. Oh, my it's God. That's oh, wicked. man, it's good. Oh, man, it's good. So, I mean, I don't trust any Italian restaurant that doesn't have a picture of Frank Sinatra on the wall either. So ah, that. come on. So Centurion, which I think was... Were they both part of Press Dogs? I thought something doesn't sound right to that. So, uh, yeah, and this was the first thing I went to, actually, as a Roman Empire game, was actually Pax Romana, uh, which I which is like Middle Western Empire period, as I recall. Uh, there's also... Uh, uh, shit. What's that game called now? From GMT, it's a game about the crisis of the first century. Uh Time of Crisis. I've played that too. That's not a very hardcore war game, though. It's a, it's a pretty abstract. Let me put it that way. I've also heard good things about Hands in the Sea, but uh, uh, but I haven't played that either. Uh, the Saxon Shore is burning. I've heard of the Society of Ancients, which did produce some some interesting things, uh, but I thought they were a mostly miniatures oriented bunch. So, so this, this sounds interesting actually. Right. So, um, but so, so of uh, like all the things I've mentioned, I, I believe sort of Rome is, is Roman Republican period, I think. Um, and I think furthermore that it kind of ends uh, roughly contiguously with the Punic Wars. Um, so, cause you kind of fight, you know, Carthage is one of the, um, one of the, uh, one of the factions in sort of Rome. Uh, I agree with you, Stigler. I've looked it over and I I haven't played it. So, you know, I might be, maybe there's a wonderful surprise waiting in there for me. I think, frankly, the appeal of Press Dogs Master Pack, which was a five game set that SPI released them all individually and then released them all together in like a big double flat pack. Uh, they never did a soapbox version of it. And, um, I don't really see the appeal in it. I think it's very primitive. I think both graphically and design wise, I think it's very primitive. I think there's pretty much better uh, implementations of all of that material later on. Um, so there is a game called Trajan, uh, which is a decision games era S and T game. And it is part of a larger series, which I forget what that's called. Uh, and, and Excalibur games might have had their hand in that particular pie, too. Yeah, so this is the Ancient Wars series. Um, and it was released by, I think, all by decision. And there's five games in the series. And you could sort of nominally kind of sort of put them all together. <clears throat> Uh, but they, they, the periods don't necessarily overlap either. You've got uh, Trajan, which is obviously an empire period, but you also have Caesar and Gaul and Roman Civil War and Germania, which I think is imperial period, but the other two are not. So, And then Trajan, there's like a boxed version called Trajan, which I think is uh, might be the entire series in one box from Decision. And I think that's the box I look at and think to myself – that looks like an Excalibur Games box, but it was from Decision. Uh, I so here's a great this is a great question, and the answer to this question is we should actually ask the Eastern Roman Empire, who never thought of themselves as Byzantines. That's a much later construction. 
um, and uh, always thought of themselves as Romans and as of the continuing the, the, tra the traditions of the Roman Empire. So I say yes, up until pretty much that, you know, if, if you're talking about, you know, 1200 Byzantines, then maybe they're, they're different enough. But uh, I say yes, absolutely. Uh, this would be interesting, actually. This is an interesting... Julian the Apostate was a Eastern Roman Empire who ruled for a year or two. Uh, got himself killed on campaign in Persia. I mean, he may actually have not made it to Persia. Uh, but he he's called the Apostate because he was converted to Christianity or was raised Christian. And then uh, suddenly became convinced that religious tolerance of the old pagan religions was a good idea and began supporting them as well. It's not really, he's a bit of an ambiguous figure, not helped by the fact that he was only around for a year or two. Um, so, so there's that. Now, Republic of Rome is one that was mentioned to me, actually, but it's, again, it's Republican period. This is a fantastic game, by the way. If you really want, it's one of those Avalon Hill games, and I think it was somebody else's game, but Avalon Hill picked it up, I think. Um, it's a really good game, but it takes a long time to play. There is a short campaign. There's like, it's like three phases in the campaign, kind of like, uh, uh, kind of like Paths of Glory, um, but you could just play one of the phases and that gives you a shorter game, but it also really plays best with at least five and maybe eight people. Um, and it takes a long time. It's still even, even the short game still probably takes four to six hours to play. So uh, the, the Turks came along later. No, the Seljuk Turks invaded uh, and took over most of the territory, but then, you know, you're only talking about the tiny rump state of Constantinople at that point. So I've heard that Rome Inc. is good, but I haven't, uh, haven't not experienced it. And very good. Uh, Hollenspiel, William Byrd says, Aurelian, restorer of the world from Hollenspiel, which is another Roman Republic have game, and I think, or Empire game. What's that? Have you played that? I have not. I don't have this one. I have, uh, Wars of Marcus Aurelius, though. Yeah, oh, it's great. You can yeah, bribe people and offer them under, the, and they're they're under no obligation to do what you bribe them to do. It's fantastic. You're <laughs> you're encouraged to stay. I mean, the rule book you don't have to do this, but the 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 rule book encourages you to stand up and make speeches, and you're always like calling for votes of the senators and all this. It's it's fantastic. It's a great simulation of cutthroat Roman politics, um, and it's a ton of fun to play. It just kind of takes a long time. You probably that... would play by mail really well, actually. Who made that game? Republic of Rome? Uh, Avalon Hill, right? Avalon Hill, but uh, somebody else... Uh, I'm looking it up. Give me a second. Uh, somebody did a, re a, a new version of it. That was I thought Phalanx in my head. Valley Games did a did a new version of it that looked really nice, but it was not around for very long. Let me put it that way. Um, the Valley Games edition is currently selling for 110 bucks in good condition on the BGG marketplace, which is pretty high. So, uh, but I'd personally uh, be happy to have the Avalon Hill version, to be honest, uh, which is not a particularly unattractive game by Avalon Hill standards. This is one reason why I'd kind of like to try Roaming, actually. I don't believe that. Uh, so Kingmaker is a board game that has cards. Republic of Rome is really a card game that has a board, and the board is kind of incidental. So uh, that's not to say I, I don't know that. I've never played Kingmaker, right? I've owned Kingmaker. I think I still have a copy of Kingmaker. I, maybe, maybe not. Um, but... Uh, there are some maybe lo maybe loopholes in the Kingmaker rules, which is why there's a lot of fan rules floating around out there. Uh, but I think that uh, I'd rather play Republic of Rome. But again, it's you know it's it's a it's a game best played with six plus people and you best played in, you know over a twelve hour period. So 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 this is interesting comment. Now, this is Empire period, right? So we're talking about the reign of the infamous Emperor Caligula. On whose reign we have a decent number of sources, but basically all of those sources were drawn from the class that it was Caligula's political enemies. So there's some reason to think, or at least consider the possibility, that maybe Caligula wasn't quite as nuts as everybody thought. 
That's true of a couple of of uh, of the more ill-regarded emperors as well, like Caracalla, for example. One of the more elaborate pieces of Roman architecture that they dug up in Rome is actually the Baths of Caracalla, the Caracalla built. So, and Caracalla was the the emperor who said, "Okay, everybody that lives in the empire is actually a citizen of the empire." That was not the case before Caracalla. So, and I'd say that's probably a pretty good move, actually. So, lose a turn sucks. It's a suck. It's it's considered a shit mechanic nowadays, particularly in a in a slowishly moving game. So, barbarian barbarians at the gates from Compass is kind of kind of a guess is a good call too uh because i haven't played it but i do have it and it is a late roman empire and it is a card driven point-to-point game <laughs> based relatively closely on the paths of glory model um and it looks pretty good <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so dan you need better painkillers uh as we <laughs> all know uh, Romans do speak, in fact, with an English accent. That's hilarious. But then so do so do Germans and Soviets. So ah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I've never played Kingmaker, so I can't really comment on that. So, Iggy Cricktall, have a good night. If you can't stick around, have a great night. Thanks for coming by. So yes, we've except well, you know. Uh, so I, I noticed that. YouTube put a bunch of movies up that are like free to watch with ads, which that that those that list includes The Longest Day, um, and it also includes Tora Tora Tora. Um, so there's some interesting movies uh, in that mix. And how uh, like how are the ads? Are they long running? Two ads? I watched ads? about half an hour of The Longest Day and didn't see an ad to be honest. Okay, because so. there's also Tubi. Yes, there is Tubi as well, yeah. uh, which also has ads. I signed up for Tubi, and I think I think the only thing I watched was maybe half an hour of Conan the Barbarian, the original, the the, the Schwarzenegger the first Schwarzenegger movie, and I didn't see any ads in that either. And the video quality is pretty good. Unfortunately, the the Conan the Barbarian DVD video quality last I bought one was pretty bad. So that is unfortunate because it's a it's a movie I have an enormous amount of fondness for. So you see, Stigler, we're talking about movies too, okay? So I uh, so this is in my opinion, this is generally an a, a, from a, like a game dis, a purely game design mechanics standpoint. This is an an emasculating and deprotagonizing mechanic that I do not like. And my mechan- if I were designing any game, it, this is a, a phenomenon I would seek to avoid um, because you can't do anything. This is why I don't like Combat Commander. Not because you don't have control, but because you are deprotagonized by the rules when they you just aren't allowed to do anything. So... Fog of War, man. Fog of War. So, yeah, Fog of War is a thing. Now again, I I haven't played Kingmaker. It's a, it is a classic though that is still highly regarded today by lots of people. And I don't think anybody is going to try and make the case that the game's airtight uh, because there's there's tons of variants of it. Uh, somebody's bringing it back, as I recall. It, I think that might even be um, crap. The original publisher in England, Ariel, was originally published by Ariel, and I think they're bringing it back. So. So we'll see if uh, what they what they bring back, right? Could be could be anything. Could be some new revised version or a Kilroy of Kilroy was here is in fact here. So so hopefully. Uh, so there's Britannia too, which is uh, I've never played Britannia either. As as Lou will be delighted to tell you, that's a Lou Pulsifer game. And um, it is also a, a pretty well-regarded game. It's been through a bunch of different editions from multiple publishers. Um, and I'd like to play it at some point. It's just never particularly high on the um, on the priority list of things to play. Um, if you haven't seen it, yes, the series Rome is very good. And you might be able to watch it on Amazon Prime without subscribing to HBO. I'm not sure. You could at one it, point. What? Isn't it only two seasons? And it, it is only two end? seasons. But and it doesn't the, end, right? 
What do you mean? It doesn't end. Oh, it doesn't end. Well, yeah, after two seasons. Oh, okay. But I mean, I thought I, there, there's a show I, called, I think it's Circus or forget it. I don't know what I'm saying. Spartacus? I don't know what I'm saying. I think it of the Spartacus show. I'll talk about that in a second, actually. Um, so the Rome from HBO is a really good show, but you could definitely tell in the second season when they knew they weren't going to get a third season, how they kind of compressed the timeline uh, to kind of make everything happen that they wanted to get done in the show. Uh, and I, I really felt like the, that second season did suffer for that. Um, it feels really cr uh, crunched. Um, there's also, I think what Dan's talking about, I think is the show Spartacus Blood and Sand from Stars. And what that basically is, is if, don't, don't think of it as a remake of Spartacus, the movie with Kirk Douglas. Uh, for one thing, because it's not that good. And secondly, it is very much the story of Spartacus as told by people who didn't read the history of Spartacus and as filmed by Zack Snyder from 300. Um, so it does have kind of a lot of the slow motion, you know, bullet time camera work and stuff like that. So if you're going to be impressed by that, then it's a pretty cool show. Um, if you are particularly fixated on Lucy Lawless, go ahead and watch it. But I was not really that impressed with it personally. I did watch more of it than I watched of Vikings. So I'll tell you that. Yeah, Vikings, I don't know. I, I was super into uh, Norse stuff when Vikings came out. And um, let's say that they their understanding of history was a little on the loose side, shall we say. They did some cool stuff. It's a well-filmed show. Yes, uh, yes, but absolutely. But their history is, is can, can fuckered all over the place. So... I've oh, uh, yeah. have queued this up, and I haven't actually watched it yet. Hey, uh, uh, chariot racing. There's a whole long history of chariot racing games. So, I'm yeah. curious, let me let me get to chariot racing in a second. Or do you have a specific question? No. Nah. Okay, so we got the new GMT game, Charioteer, on the way. We also have the classic Avalon Hill Circus Maximus, which might be another one that somebody else did first. Um, and then we had Dean Essig's take on Circus Maximus, Circus Minimus, which passed through my hands at one point, and I probably should have hung on to it. Um, I think Circus Maximus has a lot of fans who remember it and remember it fondly, and I think it's it's another one of those Avalon Hill games that just too slow. Um, when you actually sit down and play it, it just takes too long, which is why Dean wanted to do Circus Minimus. And yes, Daniel Silverthorne. It was Carnival I was thinking of. Carnival. Thank you. Uh, Carnival got two seasons as well. Um, and the the ending of the second season was, was pretty satisfying. I mean, I, I would have loved to have seen more seasons of that because it was fantastic and fucking nobody watched it. That's why it got canceled after two seasons. Nobody watched it. So... Todd Cox, Great Battles of Julius Caesar Deluxe will be his first Roman era game. So very good. It is going to be a very good choice. Uh, bear in mind that it's got, you probably know this since you, you ordered it, right? It's got all the Julius Caesar stuff. So it's got the Civil War battles. Plus it's got most of Caesar Conquest. Well, all of Caesar Conquest of Gaul, plus a couple of the expansions for Caesar Conquest of Gaul. So there's going to be a lot of content in it that is both... Uh, that is Caesar centric. Let me put it that way. I think it is not going to include the contents of battles of the warrior queen, which was the last expansion for Caesar conquest of Gaul that they did relatively recently. And that is at least a hundred years after Julius Caesar was stabbed and thrown into the Tiber. So he wasn't thrown into the Tiber, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, Hey, dead, dead would got a wrap up movie at least. So I, I was a big fan of that as well for a while. Too much swearing. Oh, just magnificent swearing, <laughs> profane poetry in that show. Fantastic show. Yeah, but it was <laughs> it was horrifically expensive. That is absolutely true. That main actor is uh, something, man. Who are you talking about? Timothy Oliphant, or are you talking about uh, uh, Ian McNeese? Uh, Ian the McShane. gruff guy, you know, uh, the, with a the, mustache. Uh, the guy, the, the guy with the mustache from Deadwood, God really not helping me, Dan. Work not at all. Me. 
Al Swearingen, the saloon owner, is that the guy who used a particularly profane word kind of all the time? Yeah, yeah. You're pro- I, he's the best character on the show. So right, right. I have heard there's been some video coverage of invasions. It looked like it had a lot of potential, but it also looked like it had some issues. So I don't know that it was a bomb, but because it did it did draw a lot of attention, but um it people seem to feel that it had some problems. So uh, I never really got into Dark Matter, even though it is a show that fits dead into Traveler. So I didn't really take a shine to it, but it definitely had potential. I watched about six six episodes of it, something like that. Did you watch uh, what is it? Love, Death, and Robots. I so it's a it's an anthology show. I've watched a couple yeah. episodes of it. Yeah. Um, Apparently, the episode I watched not that long ago wasn't that good because I can't remember it. So okay, I, I I watched them all and I was flipping out. Okay, Did, was that the one that had Beyond the Aquila Rift in it? I think so. That's based because that's a good episode. That's based on a short story by Alastair Reynolds, who's a Scottish hard sci-fi author that I like a lot. So it's funny that Ken should mention this. We're drifting off of Roman Empire now. I'm actually reading the first Dumarest novel right now, The Winds of Gath. And I got to tell you, I don't think it's very good. <laughs> I think it's very choppily paced. Um, so, But you can obviously see the huge impact on Traveler. Uh, that is absolutely there. And I mean, we knew that. But um, So unfortunately, Stegler, because of when I was in that total pants shitting panic mode of am i going to have enough money for closing costs i canceled all the subscriptions and one of the subscriptions i canceled was hbo max um and i did not get the chance to to start watching the wire again before that happened so i did however finish westworld up to the point where they had gotten to at that point and which was that was, good it's pretty good yeah i okay. I, I do like it and they the second, the third season, a lot of people didn't like the third season. I thought the third season was pretty good. Uh, it's definitely a different kind of show in the third season. So, Z Man's War of the Roses. Uh, well, definitely not. I thought Z Man was a zombie game company. Am I wrong about that? You're wrong. Uh, we haven't mentioned Avalon Hills Gladiator, actually. And of course, gladiatorial games were a thing, you know, way back in Roman history history so that could be uh both empire and republican period um i remember feeling like um i never owned gladiator at any point and like uh gunslinger it was a game that i really kind of wanted to try at some point and i never got to uh so i think avalon hills uh, i think i think gilbert collins has a video on uh gunslinger at least i could be wrong about that Hold on, I shall return. I want to go get Dean Essex, uh, whatever yeah, game. I think I, re- I think I remember this interview with David Milch uh, when he, he 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 was asked about the the kind of modern and anachronistic profanity used in the show. Uh, they wanted to include the the appropriate level of profanity, but the 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 old timey profanity would have sounded goofy, like Yosemite Sam. Got tarnation. Blah, 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 blah. So I haven't read this. Uh, it's uh, one I would like to read. I have heard of it. I am. It, it is. I don't own it. So uh, I tend to buy these things in uh, in uh, electronic book format now. By the way, all the Dumarest books are available for something like two ninety nine or one ninety nine in ebook format on Amazon. So if you got a Kindle or a you know phone with the Kindle app or whatever. Uh, and you want to, and and I don't know that I needed to start with the first one necessarily, uh, but I did because it was the, also the most expensive one, which is not the way that normally works. So I have new, I have not read a Western book since grade school. So, and I don't, I, I do enjoy some Western movies, but uh they uh, they've kind of been ruined for me by the good, the bad, and the ugly because no Western movie is as good as the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, and I actually started watching Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in America, 
So thank you very much, Patrick. Much appreciated. Thank you for uh, stopping by as well. Caesar and Alicia. Yeah, that's got a very good reputation. A lot of people, it's easier to find players for that than it is to find players for the GBOH Alicia game, which is the one that I've got. Obviously, it's a fascinating situation too. Roman Republic, right? Not not Empire, but it's still a cool Roman game. So if you don't, you're not familiar with the situation, um, Caesar's trying to put down this insurrection in Gaul led by Vercingetorix. Uh, a uh, chieftain of one of the tribes, okay? So Vercingetorix gets holed up in this stronghold at Elysia. So Caesar lays siege to the stronghold. But then this much larger Gallic army shows up to relieve the siege. And Caesar's like, well, crap. So there, there's this, uh, the, 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 the settlement of Elysia is being laid siege by this Roman army, which then builds its own fieldworks on the outside of its encirclement and is then in turn besieged by this larger Gallic army. So <clears throat> it's a uh, really unique battle. There's really no nobody can think of a battle like that, right? In, certainly in the ancient world. And uh, it, the game itself, Caesar and Elysia, has a good reputation. So um, I don't know who the designer of that was. Uh, looks like it is a Robert Bradley design. Um, Robert Bradley is not a designer with whom I am acquainted. And in fact, according to our good friends at all, the always accurate board game geek, uh, it looks like that's the only, uh, design to his credit. Hey, did we talk about gladiator? The movie? No, the game. Yes. We just okay. mentioned it. Unforgiven is pretty good too. I, f I always feel like the, the ending of, uh, Unforgiven is kind of a letdown, actually, where he just kind of goes in. I mean, I have spoilers here, but he just kind of goes in and guns everybody down, and that's it. And I'm like, why didn't you do this before, right? I mean, because it would have been a short movie. Well, that's true. And by the way, it's a that's great true. movie. What's the matter with you? Yeah, no, it's a great movie. I'm not saying it isn't, but it's you know, it's uh, it's all right. Uh, ah, right, <clears throat> very good. So I haven't read the book. Uh, I and I have so. I started listening to Re Mike Duncan is a podcaster. Okay. And he's got, I'm going to talk about podcasts for at least five minutes. Um, he's got, he started out with the history of Rome podcast and I have listened to some of the early episodes of that. And I got to tell you, I'm not that big a fan because he kind of takes and He's telling you it's kind of semi mythological history, but it's, it's a really mythological history. Right. And I would have moved through it a lot faster than, than Mike Duncan did. Um, he has also gotten a lot better at it over the course of the amount of time he's been podcasting. So I first started listening to Mike Duncan with the revolutions podcast. And I started with the Russian revolution, which is the latest series, which I think just ended. So I got most of the way through that. And then I, well, there's like, no, I'm out of episodes and I drive a lot. So I went back to the beginning and started listening to the English civil war, the, or the English revolution, I guess I'll call it the American revolution, the French revolution, uh, and I think that's where I am right now. And now I started listening to the Age of Napoleon podcast, which is a fresher perspective on the period and where I am at in that series. He's still in the French Revolution as well. So, so, uh, Tim Zale suggests the Camelot game Caesar and Alicia upgrade. So that sounds like a good idea. So, Paperless Writer mentions the Sword of Truth series by Terry Goodkind, okay? Now, I picked up the first, this was at the time where I think everybody was looking for something to tide them over until the next Wheel of Time book came out. Uh, so, I think Terry Goodkind, who did whatever else you want to say about him, did get books finished. So, so there's that. Um, I picked up the first one, and I found it to be, at the time offensively dumb in retrospect maybe i was being somewhat unfair to that first third of that book uh because since then a, a lot of people who should know better have been offensively dumb so maybe good kind was on to something now i know he kind of went off the deep end on some of the later books but i don't really i didn't read those so i don't have anything to say about them so it is not a series i would recommend and I'm not going to revisit, but <clears throat> maybe I was a, a little harsher than Terry Goodkind deserved the first time around. So, 
What did the Romans ever do for us? Great, great piece of work from uh, Life of Brian, by the way. They had toilets. This is an incorrect statement. Terry Goodkind was a douche. He is dead. <laughs> so, uh, once upon a time in the West, I have seen, which is great. Uh, it's not as good as the good, the bad, and the ugly, but it's it's very good. Um, it's an opera, man. It's an opera. I just started watching Once Upon a Time in America, and I have not managed to successfully get through it yet. So that's really? another Sergio Leone uh, classic. Yeah, with Robert De Niro, James Woods, a uh, bunch of other people. Yeah, why didn't so, you? Uh, what what's stopping you from going through it? I think it's a fantastic movie. I just haven't finished it yet. That's oh a, okay. I don't remember what I was watching, and I must have been Netflix. And the little girl is Jennifer Connelly's first role. I, I did see Jennifer Con Connelly in it. Yeah, so this is a... Ugh. Yeah, so like I said, I didn't get this far, but uh, it's creepy, right? It's 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 uh, a lot of people interpreted Good Kind's fixation on that as being very, very creepy. So Bloody Cardinal was in uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. Yes, she was. So, and there's a story about that. That Sergio I'm not a hundred percent sure I've ever watched a John Ford Western. And that's probably a little embarrassing, but I'm not that big of a Western fan. Um, uh, I've never seen, <clears throat> never seen high noon, never seen Shane, never high seen. High noon is excellent. Yeah. High I've heard that's good. I so I've heard that the, uh, what's the other one with John Wayne? Um, the one where, uh, the True one that was Brit. remade with Jeff Bridges. True, True Grit. Brit. Yeah. Yeah. The Jeff Bridges one is supposed to be good. Now I it's have seen good. the Outlaw Josie Wales. It's um, that's great. That's hard for me to watch now. It's a uh, you know, uh, there's reasons, but uh, uh, the um, Pale Rider was really good. So. Excellent. So uh, I I have happily ate up the first three George R R Martin uh, yeah fantasy books and then realized you know at that point he was he was he was starting to lose track at that point the first two were pretty good and the first one's very good yeah i'm not let's not talk about libertarianism as the, that term is currently used so um 1883 is this that pre uh pre prequel to yellowstone I, I do know that the Josie Wales is the the character Josie Wales in the movie, uh, which does not mean it's a bad movie or a badly made movie. It's not, uh, but it, it, he is the uh, an example of a Confederate character who is written to exemplify all these imaginary virtues possessed by Confederate individuals. Let me put it that way. Uh, oh, no, yeah, I, I want to see this, actually. I agree. And, of course, Blazing Saddles, a movie that simply couldn't... Well, you, you, people say you, you could never make a movie like Blazing Saddles now, but, I mean, we did get uh, Django Unchained, okay? So maybe we could, if you know well, what I'm saying. Well... This is the one with Leonardo DiCaprio and the dog, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, but Blazing Saddles was a comedy. Django Unchained is, was more like a... A, a period historical, if you want, piece, you know? Uh, yeah, so I don't consider Westerns to be historical films. Nah, they're all Italian. They're all, well, all the best ones are. But uh, I don't consider them to be historical films. Almost all of them are fictionalized to one extent or another. Many intentionally, even those about historical people. So, um, uh, um, Wyatt Earp. Okay, we've seen several movies about Wyatt Earp. The name I had in my head, by the way, when I was struggling to come up with Wyatt Earp, was Wayne Newton. So that that is a hilarious image for your for your viewing enjoyment later on. But uh, but uh, I mean, the the character of Wyatt Earp was was greatly romanticized to a completely fictional degree uh, by his widow. So all the stories about Wyatt Earp that we've seen on film have all been very heavily fictionalized. I have heard good movie? things about the uh, about the, the 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 Jeff Bridges True Grit. No, I've never seen good, the man. original. 
I'm not as big a John Wayne fan as a lot of people are. I will leave it at that. Have you ever seen uh, Ethan Frome? Ethan Frome. Is that a movie or an actor? It's it's a movie and it's played by um, that, that Irish guy there, uh, Liam Neeson. Okay, no, I guess I haven't. Right. Uh, yeah, Eric Flint did just pass away just in the last week or two. One of my favorite uh, Westerns, though, is The Sons of Katie Elder, which does star John Wayne. I don't know who the director was of that. But um, but that's uh, John Wayne, who incredibly is, plays brothers with uh, Dean Martin in that film. Um, so that's that's something. Uh, but yeah. uh, but I, I remember see, that's a movie I loved as a kid. Let me put it that way. And The Searchers is a classic. I've never seen that. That may have been one of the films or maybe I'm thinking of Rio Bravo that was written by Leigh Brackett, old sci fi writer, uh, classic sci fi writer who also at the very end of her life, wrote the first draft of The Empire Strikes Back. I've heard good things about Open Range, but I haven't seen it. And I got this queued up to watch. Um, I saw that. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, this is... Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't... <laughs> I, I, I think if you're, if you're... If you're examining Django Unchained from the perspective of its historical accuracy, I think you have accidentally... St- stumbled into the incorrect theater okay i don't believe in this exactly the same way that i don't believe you can watch inglorious bastards and see it as a historical film um i don't think you can do that with django unchained either now that's i think less obvious in the case of inglorious bastards until you have seen the ending if you have seen the ending then you know it's just kind of this thing and maybe you, you'll treat it as as less like a historical piece, okay? So, you ever see the original Inglorious Bastards? No, the Italian was that an Italian film. Yeah. I don't know that it's. I don't know that the Tarantino one is a remake necessarily. No. Um, this would be. Uh, Oh, what's that damn thing with right that he did with Robert Rodriguez? Uh, oh, um, um, yeah. And I gotta uh, tell you, the the Quentin Tarantino part of the movie is a lot more watchable than the than the uh, Robert Rodriguez part from Dawn the, Till Dusk. Yeah, from Dusk Till Dawn. Yeah, the yeah, which happened? got it turned into a series at some point. Now. Um, there's also the, the only Tarantino movie that I just have not been able to finish was The Hateful Eight. I just did. Is that no good? I just didn't get into it. Um, you, you you want to, but I think the pacing is off. I think it's just way too fucking long. So I liked Grindhouse, but again, the best part of the, it's another uh, ensemble like ensemble direction thing where there's four different directors. No, that's not true. I'm thinking of four rooms. Uh, but Grindhouse is <clears throat> is the same way, right? It's the, the Quentin Tarantino part is the best part of the movie. And I think Quentin Tarantino's kind of an ass, but he's made generally pretty good stuff, generally. But again, The Hateful Eight, I couldn't get... I, I got about 45 minutes in and I did turned it off and went and did something else and then uh, never got back to it. Kill Bill, I've managed to finish, so it's not my favorite Tarantino piece. But um, it's... A, a, a really underrated Tarantino film is Jackie Brown, by the way. Highly, That's highly cool. enjoyed Jackie Brown. Uh, True Romance doesn't count as a Tarantino film because it wasn't directed by him. It was just written by him. And you could, looking at it now, you could tell. We, John C. from the sunny Philippines, we have already finished. All the answers have been laid out in our previous discussion of the Roman Empire and Wargaming. So we're done. We can talk about whatever we want now. So Reservoir Dogs. I wasn't as crazy about Reservoir Dogs as a lot of people were. However, I saw Reservoir Dogs after I saw I had seen Pulp Fiction. And I think it doesn't... it. It's not as good a movie as Pulp Fiction, right? A, a lot of the techniques that Tarantino leveraged in Reservoir Dogs, he mastered in Pulp Fiction. And he had Roger Avery's help too, and that's a, been a factor. And that's frankly why I think that's still his best movie. So, with the possible exception of Jackie Brown, because that's a great movie. So, 
I don't remember this, but uh, but okay. <laughs> Maybe I just noticed it. Uh, there was talk at one point of, I don't know that there was talk from anybody but Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino wanted to make a Star Trek movie, which is going to be like Star Trek and go, the Enterprise goes back to the gangster planet from a piece of the action, which <laughs> makes me want to punch Quentin Tarantino in the face. I got to tell you, because that would be absolutely that. obnoxious. Absolutely obnoxious. So, yeah, I think I think if there if there's a better Quentin Tarantino movie than Pulp Fiction, it's Jackie Brown. That's a great movie. Jackie Brown's it's great, a fantastic movie. Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels is a lot of fun too. Fantastic, I gotta tell you. And Snatch was good too, man. Uh, I remember. Was Snatch the one where with uh, Brad Pitt as the Irish yeah. traveler, bu- bare knuckle boxing guy? Yeah, because he's the, he kind of steals every scene that he's in. I got to tell you, I'm not the world's biggest Brad Pitt fan, but man, he steals every scene that he's in in that thing. So, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels is just tons of fun, and that's got like Jason Statham in it, who's just like some dude, right? He's not like <laughs> ultra badass Jason Statham. <laughs> Somebody, some. Some British lady is in a restaurant somewhere and some guy starts hitting on her and makes an ass of himself and is becoming very obnoxious. And then her boyfriend comes out of the bathroom and his her boyfriend turns out to be Jason Statham. So I can only imagine that obnoxious dude evaporated instantaneously. So uh, I did see Burn After Reading. It, it, it's pretty good. So yeah, I, I I think this is I don't I don't think the Star Trek people were taking Tarantino's offer seriously here. Uh, nor do I think he's a good fit for James Bond. Um, if that was like a short, like a seven minute short, I would totally watch it. A feature length film through that. I don't even go watch the real James Bond movies anymore. I gotta watch Layer Cake. That's supposed to be really good. Uh man, that's an that's a that's a harrowing film to watch. I haven't even seen it. That's a good movie. Uh, I think it just showed up on Netflix. I think somebody said that. I, you know, I, I don't really clearly remember him in Thelma and Louise. I know he was in it, but I, he did not make a strong impression on me in Thelma and Louise. Tom Cruise would make a good. It, it depends. It, it Tom Cruise makes what Tom Cruise wants to make, right? Tom Cruise wants to make says gets up one morning and says, "You know, what would be cool is if I made a samurai movie where I got to be a samurai." It doesn't matter if I'm not Japanese. And then he goes and makes, he hires a bunch of Japanese people and makes The Last Samurai. And it turns out it's a, it's a pretty good movie until you, when you, once you realize that he's really not the main character. Uh, Ken Watanabe's character is kind of the main character. And, you know, him flying the jets and jumping off the cliffs and all that jazz is all, is all the same thing. So um, I got to, you know, people that work with Tom Cruise speak highly of Tom Cruise. Let me put it that way. Even though he's kind of wacky. I have never seen Johnny Swade. He'd love that uh, well, you may not have, you may not be on the money here, old lady plays, but, um, but I'm not gonna, th- th- that is a, a topic we're not getting into this evening. Let me put it that way. So, and, and I haven't also haven't seen the movie in probably 20 plus years. So there's that. Uh, yeah. So the prop the problem that people had with this, is that um, Tom Cruise is like five foot six, and there's the the character Jack Reacher from the book is a uh, like seven foot tall male power fantasy, um, and physically he's not the correct type to play that character. The author of those books, Lincoln Child, am I right about that? Um, said he was happy with the performances, but that may have just been him trying to be pol- politically correct about it. Um, not politically correct, but but trying not to be a jerk about it. Uh, the guy from the Jack Reacher show on Amazon is a much closer to the physical characteristics of the character from the books, which I have not read. Um, I have not seen that show. However, I have seen a clip of it, which earned instant credibility by using as the diegetic song that was in the scene, uh, something from Howlin' Wolf. That I instantly rec- I forget the song, but I instantly recognized it as Howlin' Wolf, which which the, the show got a lot of credit for me uh, on that. Tom Cruise's 
awesome in Tropic Thunder. I, I'm not sure I've even... No, I take that back. I have seen the movie, and frankly, there's there's two not... The two things that are not just totally forgettable in the film are Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Cruise. Um, and I am not even going to try to explain that. <laughs> Uh, but those are the Ben Stiller parts are all totally forgettable. Totally forgettable. Uh, that's an interesting perspective. That's a good point, actually. And that Tom is Cruise is really good name. in Magnolia, too. Jack Reacher, for God's sake, man. So, speaking of Fatty Arbuckle. So, <laughs> not, not, not wrong. So, uh, no, nobody disagrees with this. Yeah. Um, so... Mitch Hedgeberg. So who's Mitch Hedgeberg? He's a really funny, funny comedian. Someone who said, I used to do drugs. I still do. I guess I used to do. Okay. Yeah. So know, is this like alleged? He, is this is an alleged comedian Dan is referring us to? Yeah, you may, yeah. You said, could probably find clips of their alleged comedy on YouTube. Yes, it's hilarious. So, all right. Trying to catch any last comments. We have. We did get a good chunk of Roman Empire Roman stuff uh, talked about. We, you know, did drift off that about forty minutes in, but uh, um. I'm a really weird with comedy, man. I, there's a lot of comedy. I just sit there stone faced watching. Ricky Gervais, excellent. Uh, he he may have been funny at one point. I think he's excellent. Uh, he might have been funny. I don't know. I mean, he might <laughs> might have one or two funny things. Uh, somebody that who I I didn't used to think was funny at all, and who now I will now admit is at least occasionally funny is Will Ferrell. I think he he gets he gets timing wrong some of the time, and it's it seems off. But um, but at least sometimes Will Ferrell is funny, so I, I well, will give him that. He didn't get the timing wrong in uh, when they did uh, "Don't Fear the Reaper" in Saturday Night Live. I was man. gonna mention the cowbell. We need more cowbell. <laughs> I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. I gotta have more I got cowbell. A fever. So uh, uh, that was. Good. Uh, shit, Christopher. Uh, uh, Christopher. That guy is playing the emperor in Dune Part Two. Are you Christop serious, Christopher Walken? Yeah, Christopher Walken. That's going to be an interesting, an interesting thing happening there. People. So, <laughs> so there's actually a really funny skit. If you haven't seen History of the World Part One. It's 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 not Mel Brooks's funniest movie, but frankly, nobody's no other movie is as funny as Mel Brooks's funniest movie. Um, whichever movie you think that is, whether you think that's Blazing, everybody's kind of split on this between Blazing Saddles and Young Young. I'm a Young Frankenstein guy. Young person. Frankenstein. Um, but the, the 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 there's the one thing. It's Gene Wilder bit that you'll see in the movie. If you haven't seen Young Frankenstein, watch Young Frankenstein. You'll know the scene I'm talking about. It's Gene Wilder put it in. It's it's pants shittingly hilarious. So, um, but history of the world part one's pretty good. It's got some good stuff in it. So so worth worth your time. And there's a good bit about comedians in ancient Rome, uh, with Those are Arthur, some knockers. no less. So a bullshit artist. Have you <laughs> bullshitted today? <laughs> Have you tried to bullshit today? So it's uh, it's a great with with B Arthur no less. So it told it it's fantastic. Peter Sellers was of course a, an all around genius, but unfortunately, uh, genius, genius. Unfortunately, like a, a, too many people, he uh, believed he in asshole. wacko shit instead of medicine, and he didn't get treatment for his treatable disease and died. So, so that aside, so we all mourn the loss of Peter Sellers. I like Lynch's Dune too, but it is kind of a weird thing honestly i could talk for an hour about david lynch's doom so maybe we'll do a show on that at some point but that show is not this evening so i'd like to thank everybody for stopping by we got a lot of great ideas that i hadn't thought of um so thanks very much for the roman warfare war games suggestions we will be back next week on dan's channel and hopefully he will be able to fist us all again next week